Hey guys, this is AI Gaming1776, and I'm doing a live demonstration using an i5 4690K and a GTX 1060, both of which are overclocked, to play Forza Horizon 3. And we're going to discuss how the game performs with this hardware, okay? So we're starting off at the Ultra preset and with VSync completely turned off. So we have everything uncapped. I can show you that. Go to video. So unlocked frame rate, no VSync. Ultra preset, it's not on the dynamic render quality there. See, that's grayed out, and we can go into advanced. So this is the real Ultra preset. There's no VSync on. And as you will see, the game will stutter, and the frame rate will be pretty terrible, as will be my driving for the most part. All right, so they all have Jaguars too. Isn't that crazy? Like, literally, I think I'm racing against all Jaguars, which is highly interesting in my gold-plated Corvette. This car is actually really fast, it just doesn't have brakes. I mean it, like brake, I think a lot of my stats are uh, at 10. Literally, like two or three of my stats are at perfect 10, and then my brakes are at four. So, yeah. It doesn't handle well, nor does it stop, but it is a rocket. So as you can see, it's not ideal right now. All right, we're we're at uh, I was gonna say maxed out. We're at the ultra preset, 48 frames per second. There, I've seen it go down as low as 40, so it's not ideal. But check this out, check this out if you will. So let's turn on VSync and let's actually go for 30 FPS. Okay, we're still at um, the ultra preset, but watch the frame rate counter now. It's in the upper right hand corner, all the way up there. That 30. And that will very likely not even fluctuate. It is highly likely that we will keep a rock solid 30 FPS. And I think for a lot of people, that'll be good enough. I think a lot of people will say, wow, you can run the ultra preset. MSAA is times four. Uh, it looks fairly decent, you know, good enough. And to that, I will say it is your money. It is your computer and it is your fun to be had. However, for me, 30 FPS is kind of disappointing, especially because we're actually overclocked on everything. The GPU is overclocked, the system RAM is overclocked, and the CPU is overclocked, if I didn't say that twice. So the GTX 1060 is overclocked to at least 2050 megahertz. It could be as high as 2100. It just depends on what the GPU boost wants to do at any given second and how hot everything is. And then the CPU is a 4690K, that's a Haswell i5, and that is at 4.2 gigahertz. And then the RAM is at 1866 megahertz, which isn't the fastest DDR3 RAM that there is, but 30 FPS for me is a little disappointing. However, uh, it, it can be done, right? It can be capped at 30 FPS, uh, everything's on ultra, MSAA is on, but, um, we're gonna play with this a little bit, right? We're gonna do this race again. And luckily this particular race, when you finish it, you're not very far from the starting point. So it's not too difficult to start again. Matter of fact, yeah, it should be right behind me. It's right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this 30 FPS and we're gonna bump it up to 60. Now, V-Sync is on, all right, V-Sync is on and it's set for 60 now and you're already seeing frame rate fluctuations it went to 58 oh there's 56 and i think i saw 55 oh there it went to 52 51 yeah already fluctuating and during the race it can go down into the 40s all right and i think it was going into the 40s when vsync was off at the start of this video you got to forgive me this is my 18th take of this video so it's starting to get a little bit hazy it's all starting to blend together what I want to do in this video is show you how the game plays with this i5, give you some ideas of how it behaves, and then I'm going to actually put a GTX 1080 in the system to see if we can use brute force to get rid of the stuttering and the fluctuating. And the reason I say that is the game stutters for a lot of people. And with my i7s, I've tested it with two i7s so far, I actually more or less got rid of most of the stuttering with some tricks and I made a video about five or six days ago I posted that video 
Um, over 5,000 people have seen the video as of right now. And for a lot of people, they've said my tricks have helped to make the game quit stuttering. However, a lot of people also said, no, the game still stutters. And it turns out a lot of them were using i5s. Now, here's the thing. I was surprised. And the reason I was surprised is, believe it or not, this is an overclocked 4690K, and I'm having some pretty big stuttering problems. It's stuttering all over the place right now. And my non-overclocked 4790i7 doesn't really have the stuttering problems, right? It's slower. It's, it's supposed to be a 4 gigahertz chip as far as boost goes, but when you check hardware monitor, it almost never hits that 4 gigahertz. It's actually like 3.8, 3.9. So, I figured surely this i5 would be able to handle the game, and it cannot. Now, as you can see, if I cap the game at 30 FPS, yes, it can. Oh, and by the way, um, some people are going to say, well, why don't you change the priority? You know, it's, look, I've tried it. Trust me. I've, I've done everything. See, we were already at a low priority right now. I'm going to move it to a high priority. If you don't know how to do this, let me show you. So, you're in the game. Pause it, hit Control Alt Delete, and then click on your Task Manager. Go to Details, and then you're looking for Forza underscore X64. All right, it's alphabetical in this left hand column. So set priority. We're at low, we're going to set it to high. Okay, and it's still probably going to perform like crap. Yep, 52 frames per second still. Let's keep driving. 51, 49 frames per second. Here's the thing. When you're using an i7, changing the priority can actually be useful. All right. So as you can see, we've changed the priority. We were already on low, which means I had already changed it before I started recording. I just changed it again in front of you. Um, it, it's not playing well. Now, a lot of you might say, well, AI, turn off MSAA. And to that, I'll say fine, but that's not going to fix it. See, Digital Foundry accidentally got everybody saying that turning off MSAA will fix it, but it doesn't, all right? In Digital Foundry's video, wow, 44 frames per second, and it is really stuttering. So in Digital Foundry's video, they use the Titan XP at 4K, and a Titan freaking XP I'll say that again. And they turned MSAA off with that card and they got the game to play at 60 FPS. And they admitted that it barely played at 60 FPS when they did that. See, we're still at 47 frames per second and it is stuttering like crazy with MSAA off. So anyway, this whole thing got started because Digital Foundry says, oh, well, with a Titan XP, we turn off MSAA and then we can play the game at Ultra. Well, yeah, if you have a Titan XP, sure. But if you have anything less than that, no. No, turning off MSA is not good enough to get rid of the stutter. It just isn't, even at 1080p. You know what I'm saying? Like, let alone 4K, but even at 1080p, that doesn't get rid of the stutter. All right, so you've seen the game. Overclocked, uh, overclocked CPU, overclocked GPU, overclocked system RAM. We change the priority. We turn MSA. We turn MSAA off. We uncap the frame rate. We had VSync at 60. The only thing that actually worked was when we um, had it on 30 30 hertz, 30 FPS frame rate cap. That's the only thing that worked, right? So that works with this i5 and with this 1060. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the low preset. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do that, the low preset. So let's do that. We're going to exit to the desktop. The game is now stopped. Start it right back up. So yeah, this has been driving me crazy because I've used, when I use that locked 4790, I thought, I thought for sure an overclocked 4690K would beat that. That seemed logical to me. I think that is the common prevailing game performance wisdom. That it's possible for an overclocked i5 to beat an i7. Maybe I'm wrong. 
you know, maybe I'm just drinking the Kool-Aid, but a lot of people have said that to me, and I just, I believed it, because I read it enough times. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't, it's funny, my locked i7-4790 has been a really good processor for me, even compared to my 6700K, right? I have a 4.7 gigahertz 6700K, and here's the thing. My 6700K overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz can do more. It does 4K gaming much better. It reaches higher frame rates, sometimes like 15 frames per second higher. However, my 4790 has never sucked. It's never, and it's not overclockable, but it has never sucked. I've never been like, man, this CPU just isn't getting the job done, even though you cannot overclock it. And when it comes to gaming, there's like no love for the CPUs that cannot be overclocked. You know, people are always telling you, oh, if you're on a budget, get an i5 that you can overclock. No one ever says get the locked i7, but I've had pretty good luck with this locked i7. Anyway, so here we are at the low preset. And V-Sync is on. We'll turn that off in a moment, but first I want to go do this race. Now the thing is, is I have gotten the game to mostly not stutter at the low preset. You know, thank goodness that it can at least handle that. But I've still seen it stutter at the low preset, which is crazy. So, we're going to do this. I have several videos on my channel, by the way, showing the um, my i7-4790 and my 6700K playing games. Not games, but this game. Without much stutter at all. I mean, you can't get rid of the stutter 100%. That's not going to happen. And it is it is an open world game. And sometimes you do like some crazy 360 power sliding or whatever. Um, so you can throw the game off. Like you can make it stutter. Plus, it, you know, it's not coded very well. The optimization is not very great. So you're not going to get rid of the stutter completely. But I have a ton of video showing the i7-4790 just handling the game at 60 frames per second like a champ. Um, I'm not going to boot that up or show that in this video. I don't want it to be too long, but I do, there it went down to 57 frames per second just now, but I do want to put a 1080 in here and I don't edit my videos. So I'll try to do that quickly and I'll timestamp it. I'll talk to you guys while I do it. I do want to put a 1080 in and just find out once and for all, like is the i5 screwed? You know what I mean? So we're on the low preset and it's actually doing a lot better than it did last time. It's only stuttered once so far. Very fast, very smooth, but, oh, by the way, artistically and color-wise, it actually looks pretty good on low. But once you start like actually looking at things, like, yeah, you can tell it's slow. The reflections are really bad on the car. The pavement textures are really terrible. Um, yeah, not very pretty. However, if you're desperate and you want 60 FPS, you could, you could play on low. You could have an overclocked i5 and an overclocked 1060, and you could play on low. Good for you. All right, so let's go to the medium preset, because if I remember correctly, the medium preset, that's, um, that's not going to work. All right, so we got to exit again to the desktop. You know what? I'm almost feeling like doing two videos. You know, I don't think I'm going to do the 1080 in this video. I, I, I think I'm going to do you guys a solid. Hit stop on the recorder and then put the 1080 in. I'll do it that way. I'll do it that way. So th that way this video doesn't have to be too long. We're almost done with this because I'm almost certain that... As soon as the race starts up, we're going to see stuttering on the medium preset. So the takeaway will probably be, if you want 60 frames per second without stuttering, you're going to have to use the low preset, and maybe you can toy with turning some settings up from there. And if you don't mind it being at 30 frames per second, well, by golly, you can run the ultra preset with MSAA times 4. And... Anything else is just going to kind of be failure. You're, you're going to get stuttering. 
and I'm starting to think it's the i5. Now, I remember why I was going to make this one video, though, is the question is, is the i5 just screwed, period? Or can you brute force it with a 1080? Can you put a 1080 with this i5 and then actually play it without stuttering? Because here's the thing. I should tell you, my i7-4790 paired with a GTX 960 doesn't stutter, right? Like it doesn't keep 60 frames per second. It goes down to 50 and so on because it's a 960. But my 960 doesn't stutter. And yet my 1060 does when paired with an i5, which strongly leads me to believe that the i5 is just screwed. And pretty much everybody commenting on my videos that has an i5 is telling me the stutter will not go away for them. Whereas people with i7s are saying, hey man, your video is showing how to get rid of the stutter, that worked. For me and my i7. That's what people in the comments are saying. So, anyway. I have now dedicated a week straight to trying to get this game to not stutter. And I'm hoping a patch fixes it. If it does, it's, it just stuttered. If it does, it's going to make my videos obsolete. It's going to make this week of work, this week, yeah, week of work. Yeah, I got that right. It's going to make this week of work obsolete, but whatever, then more people can enjoy the game. So, that's fine. My work can be obsolete. I just felt it stutter. I looked up. It was 55 FPS. Don't be tricked by this. This is... This is looking pretty decent at 54 and a hard stutter. Because uh, I, trust me, I've tested this medium preset a lot and it's always just hot garbage. All right. There have been a couple of times where it acted like, oh, there we go, 53 and a really hard stutter. There have been a couple of times where 52 and a hard stutter. Where There have been a couple of times where this preset acted like it was going to keep 60, but it's never really kept it the whole time. And as you can see, it's already done hard stuttering. It's already gone down to 52 frames per second a couple times. It just did a medium-sized stutter and went down to 58 frames per second there a couple moments ago while I was talking. I feel the frame pacing is off. All right, we know going to 30 FPS... Um, we know going to 30 FPS would make that be okay, because Ultra was okay. But what we'll do is we'll turn MSAA off, and we'll see if that fixes it. I don't think it will, because it didn't before, but you never know. It's actually doing halfway decently right now, so we'll try it. So MSAA should be off. Yes, yes, it's off. All right, so I'll do this video in two parts, but it'll basically have a cliffhanger. It'll be like, tune in next time to see if a 1080 can brute force the i5 and have it not stutter. I just felt it hitch while I was talking. And 57. I know you guys don't want to hear me repeat myself 30 times. So now instead of calling out the stutter as it happens, I haven't been. But yeah, it's hitching like crazy. MSAA is off. It's hitching like crazy. But... We could try to change the priority again. Okay, see it's at normal now because we restarted the game. We'll give it a high priority. Go back into the game. So some of you might be saying, well, Forza Apex plays great. Why doesn't this? And I'll tell you, there seems to be this thing, and you see it with uh, JRPG ports that come to PC. And I saw it with Arkham Knight, and then I've seen it with this. Sometimes there are, these, there, there are games where the priority was the console port. That was the priority. And for whatever reason, when you... Um, sorry, I'm a little bit distracted. Let me try this again. Alright, so if you have a game where the console port was the priority, and that port had 30 FPS, it had a 30 frames per second uh, cap on it on the console, sometimes those games don't play so great on PC because it was never for the developers a priority to make the game run at 60. And that's not even because they're bad people. 
It's not because they're bad developers. It's not because they want to say screw the gamers. Here's what you got to understand is Forza games have always been console games, okay? And so this game has to run great on an Xbox One. That That's their priority. They have to make it run great on an Xbox One. And there's no way in hell an Xbox One can run this at 60 FPS, but it can do it at 30. So they make that the priority, all right? And the problem is maybe they don't have the time, maybe they don't have the resources left over to make sure it runs great at higher resolutions, because as you saw, you can play this on Ultra capped at 30. Um, so, so sometimes they just don't have the manpower or the time or the money or whatever, whatever it is they're lacking to get the game running smoothly at other frame rates. Now, other times, and I think this is more likely, they have to make a deal with the devil to get it to play on the console because the console is underpowered and even 30 FPS is a miracle on the console. And sometimes they have to code the game in certain ways that are not ideal. And it's fine on a console, but as soon as you try to put it on a PC and unlock the frame rate, the game won't play right, you know? Ooh, it's stuttering super badly there. It went to 54 and it was like an alternate dimension of stuttering. So, and there's a stutter there and I looked up and it was a 58. So MSAA, medium preset, no stutter. Somewhere between low and medium, you might be able to get 60 FPS. And if you lock it at 30, you should be fine as far as like stuttering fluctuation goes with this configuration. But, you know, that, that kind of sucks. So anyway, let me finish my thought. And then I'll stop this video and I'll go put the, I'll put the 10, yeah, I'll put the 1080 into this computer. And I'll make a 1080 video for you guys. So this will just be a cliffhanger. Um, so there's the deal with the devil where I just stuttered and it went to 58. I uh, stuttered again and it went to 58. Where they're trying to get the game to run and they got to code it certain ways and they do things to the engine that make it like sketchy when you try to uncap it. And if I remember correctly, when Fallout 4 came out on PC, there were issues if you uncap the frame rate. Um, it, it, that's one of the more famous ones, but it's happened in plenty of games. It primarily happens in games where the console port was the priority though. Like you look at the JRPGs, like I keep saying, and then you look at Batman Arkham Knight, which I think, by the way, let me tell you about Batman Arkham Knight. The truth is that game doesn't look like it should perform badly. You know, like, it's you never play that game and you think, oh, well, Arkham Knight, you know, it's, it's the next crisis. But let me tell you something that this game and Arkham Knight have in common, okay? There's a lot of games where there's these open world games and they don't let you move very fast. You ever notice that where even if you're running in a game, you're not moving very quickly? That's the trick, right? So the games that don't let you move very fast, they can keep a decent frame rate because they're only having to bring in so much geometry at a time, right? But games that let you move fast, like Arkham Knight lets you move very quickly through the world when you're like gliding and you're dive bombing and you're moving the camera and you're doing all these things. Um... And then this game lets you go very, very fast and you're crashing through things and you're power sliding. And so I think that's another part of it is these open world games that let you move very quickly through the world. I think they are more prone to like hitching and stuttering. And no one ever talks about that. And I think that's an important thing to consider because Arkham Knight, I'm telling you, you can travel very quickly through that game and you can change your trajectory because you've got this um, grappling hook where you're launching at one speed with it and then like you can upgrade it so like it really flings you and you can bank and you can dive and you can do all these things you can call a car in remember how the batmobile caused a bunch of the hitching in that game on pc well think about it you can 
drive the Batmobile around a corner, power sliding, and then jump out of it and grapple hook onto something and fly around. You can do all these things in Arkham Knight. And I think because they allow you to go through their world so quickly, that adds to the stuttering and the hitching. Whereas if they made you move much more slowly and took away a lot of your mobility, the game would probably stutter less. So that's kind of like this thing that no one ever talks about. Now, with that in mind, it almost makes me think like, okay, well, is the answer to use a Phys X card? So instead of using a Phys X card for like paper debris and smoke and particles and all that, what if you use the Phys X card to help accelerate all that geometry into the picture? But, you know, whatever. That's, um, now we've gone off topic. So here's the deal, guys. As you can see, it still stutters on the medium preset. Earlier, I showed you on the um, low preset, it wasn't stuttering. That It like stuttered once, but I have seen it stutter more. I've actually had it stutter more, like, I had a gameplay session, it was in that race, where the low preset was stuttering way more than would ever be acceptable with this kind of hardware, all right? And I remember thinking like, wow, I am on the low preset. I can't make the settings go any lower and I'm using an overclock 1080 and an overclock 4690K. And here we are, it's still stuttering. So it sucks, right? Um, and the 1060 is not a terrible card, guys. So that's where we're at. What I'll do is I'll put a link to my four gigabyte GTX 960 with the i7. I'll put a link to that in this description. And you're gonna see, yeah, the frame rate goes down in that video, but it doesn't stutter, it doesn't hitch. And by the way, like I'm using a, a camera for this, but for that video, it's uh, I used an Elgato, so you'll probably like the footage better there. So that's where we're at. This is part one. We're going to leave it at a cliffhanger. Part two is going to be, um, I'm going to shut all this off and put a GTX 1080, an EVGA GTX 1080 super clock. I'm going to overclock that puppy, and then um, we'll see if we can brute force it, man. That, that's what we'll do, and if it still stutters, even with the, um, the 1080, well, that's probably going to be our answer right there, you know? that the i5 is, you know, until they patch the game, the i5 is just, it's kind of screwed. Oh, really quickly, uh, if Forza Apex plays well for you, that's what started that little sidebar. So if Forza Apex plays well for you and this doesn't, why is that? Well, it goes back to the priority was to make this game run well at 30 FPS on the console, and maybe they had to do things to the engine that, you know, like a deal with the devil that makes it so when you uncap it, like undesirable things happen. But you gotta understand that Forza Apex, that was designed to work at 60 FPS, even on console. So the engines are different. Like I know a lot of people wanna say, well, they're both Forza games, but they're different. And this game I believe is based on the Forza 6 engine, but at the same time, it's based on it. It's not the exact same thing, right? It's open world versus tracks that load up one at a time. So there are differences. Anyway, hopefully this video has been helpful for you guys. This is AI Gaming 1776. If it is helpful, please like, subscribe, share. Sharing is really important. Sharing is where it's at. And if my, in, like I give you guys in-depth videos and if these are actually useful for you, and they're helpful for you, maybe they'll be helpful for other people too. So if you could share them, I'd appreciate that, and maybe they'd appreciate that too. Whoever you share it with might be like, wow, this video answers a lot of questions for me. All right, so thanks for watching. I'm gonna shut this off and do the 1080. Once again, this has been AI Gaming 1776, and have yourselves an excellent day.